Hello, I'm Chris Hartwell, and welcome to The Heartbeat, the place where I discuss just a few of the things that make this little guy tick. Today is our preseason episode of season two of HBO's The Leftovers. Join me, won't you? So again, this is the pre-season two episode for HBO's The Leftovers. Um, today I just wanted to talk a little bit about what I'm looking forward to in the second season, a few of the concerns that I might have, and then finally wrap up with talking about how I'm going to be recapping each of the episodes as they come out week to week. So let's jump into some of the things I'm looking forward to. Uh, absolutely, one of the things I'm looking forward to is just continuing to see this story evolve. Now, one of the really interesting elements about this second season is, in the first season, the entire first season was based upon Tom Parada's book, The Leftovers, um, and that actually covered the entire first book. Now, unlike Game of Thrones, where George R. R. Martin has written numerous books and continues to write books, um, and the two showrunners on, on Game of Thrones are continuing to adapt those pieces of literature, Tom Prada only published that first book. But he is continuing on with Damon Lindelof, the show's runner, to create the second season. So there is kind of a freshness and a blazing new territory that the both of them are doing, which is kind of exciting. One of the things that I'm most excited about for the second season of The Leftovers is the fact that it really does feel like it's changing it up, and Tom Prada and Damon Lindelof are interested in exploring new territory versus just rehashing what we saw from the first season. We're going to a brand new town. We're leaving Mapleton, New York, and going to Miracle, Texas. And along with that location change comes a change of characters and an introduction of new characters. And one thing that both Prada and Lindelof have proven is they are really excellent at crafting interesting, nuanced characters. That's not to say I'm not excited to see the old characters come back and continue to follow their storyline, but I feel like new characters can certainly keep things fresh as well as act as new and interesting foils to our old characters and in very natural, realistic ways continue to help unveil aspects of their personality. And as I mentioned, we have this brand new location of Miracle, Texas. And actually one of the things that I mentioned in last week's episode about one of the critiques that I had of the first season was just kind of the over bearing bleakness of that first season. And I really do feel like the location of Mapleton, New York, as beautiful as it was, did kind of play into the overall kind of just oppressive, bleak nature of the show. Whereas with a location like Texas, I feel like there is the opportunity to counterbalance that hopeless and despairing tone just slightly. Another one of the things I'm really excited about for the second season, just from watching the trailer, is it really does look like both Parada and Lindelof are interested in owning up to the um, the consequences of some of the actions that the characters took in the first season. So for instance, at the end of the first season, in that final episode, we have Nora writing this letter to Garvey. And it's very sincere and very heartfelt, and it's essentially saying, I can't be here in this town anymore. I can't be in this place. I need to move on and get away from this place. And though the, the season buttoned up with, with Nora finding Wayne's baby on Garvey's front porch and Garvey returning home, and there seems to be sort of a reconnection of those two characters, that doesn't mean that suddenly everything's peachy keen between them and they can just move on and the letter that she wrote has no meaning at all. Rather, it looks like, no, that need and that desire to leave this place is absolutely being followed through with by their move to Texas, which is very exciting. Additionally, just from the trailer, it looks like Garvey is continuing to have these recurring visits from dead Patty, which is extremely exciting for me because it was one of those things that kind of was promised at, that his mental state is going to get worse and worse, or his mental state will continue to get better and better, depending how you want to look at it. And, for my own money, I really hope that it is kind of a Gaius Baltar situation, the uh, character from Battlestar Galactica. If you've seen that show, you know what I mean. All right, moving on to the concerns that I have for the second season. And concerns really kind of boil down to one primary concern, and not just for the second season, but for the show as a whole. And it really kind of spills out of something that I do appreciate about what Damon Lindelof is doing, and that is he has told us time and again in interviews that we're never going to get the answer to what happened to that 2%. He's not interested in, in giving us an answer. He's more interested in presenting characters who themselves have to be confronted with the issue that they will never know the answer. And, and how do they deal with that? And how do they seek happiness in a world where they don't know those answers? And that feels so true to reality and so true to, to what we experience so often in life, not knowing the answers to why this person died or why this thing happened and, and having to figure out how to cope with that. And that feels really interesting to me. I like that. You go, Damon. Good stuff. The thing that concerns me is, is right here in this, in this question and answer. So an interview asks Damon Lindelof, you have said many times that you're never going to answer where that 2% went. Fine. But for writing purposes, do you have something in your head that explains it for you? And here's 
where I'm finding the concern. Um, his response is, no, we don't. But the characters in the show don't know they're never going to get the answer. So before I talk about the thing that concerns me about that, I will say I think there is an element of, of goodness in that answer, which is I think it is very important for a lot of people on the show to be completely in the dark and to actually not know where this show is going and, and if the characters will ever get the answer because that does allow for them to put more weight on all these potential answers that they are seeking out. So for instance, if someone suddenly decides, you know what, I think it was aliens. I want to see them pursue that idea fully with a full conviction or someone decides, you know what, it was molecular teleportation. I want to see them pursue that with absolute conviction because that's how so many people in real life pursue beliefs and issues. They pursue it with absolute conviction. And if there is just that kind of wink, wink, nudge, nudge of the showrunner and then the writers saying, mmm, that's actually not what's happening here. I feel like that would do a disservice to those people and to those characters. But here's the integral flaw. Here's where it falls apart for me anyways. Let me know if you think differently. But Damon Lindelof isn't those characters. He's not the actress portraying those characters. He's not the other writers in his writer room, and he's certainly not the audience. He is, in fact, the reason that the 2% disappeared. And as the author and creator of that disappearance, if he doesn't know why they disappeared, then the characters don't have any hope, and we as an audience can't really have any hope that all these seemingly random happenings, all these seemingly unexplainable things are actually adding up to something, even if we don't ever get that revelation. Just the knowledge that there is intention behind it, that there is a purpose behind it, gives us hope. And I really do think that Damon Lindelof agrees with me. There was this other really interesting quote that he had in the same article, which was, I'd rather live in a world with meaning than a world where everything is arbitrary and we're just bouncing off each other for no reason. I completely agree. And if he, as the creator of the show, as the person who authored the disappearance of that 2%, doesn't have a meaning behind it, then those characters are, in fact, bouncing off one another. Whew, well, thank you so much for traveling down that very philosophical road with me. Um, I would definitely love to know what you guys think, though. Uh, how important is it to you for a showrunner to know where a show is going or have the answers to those big mystery questions? Is that important to you? Is it not? Also, what are you looking forward to in this next season? What are some of the concerns that you might have as it uh, gets closer and closer to its premiere date? Also, please do subscribe. This will not be the last time that I talk about The Leftovers on this channel. I intend to come back week after week after each episode is aired on Sunday night and do a little recap video talking about what were some of the positives from that episode, what were some of the negatives, what were some of the standout moments, also what were some of the mysteries that were solved in that week's episode, and then some of the mysteries that were introduced. And I would love for you to be a part of that discussion. But for now, I'm Chris Hartwell. This is The Heartbeat. And thank you for joining me.